Listen to God's word that comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem to Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the hostel. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A Savior just has been born in David's town. A Savior who's Messiah and Master. And this is what you're to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angel had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherds returned and left us glorifying and praising God for everything they had seen and heard. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, we do ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts are acceptable and pleasing in your sight. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the year 2018, in the month of February, when Kim Reynolds was governor of Iowa, a child was born. Music played to announce the birth. The grandparents posted it on Facebook pages. Nurses in sterile garb cleaned the baby, wrapped her in a blanket, and took more pictures. And at least one grandma wept with silent joy. The birth was a miracle as is each child is conceived and born. But it was also pretty ordinary. There were a few complications thanks to the doctors and the nurses, thanks to the sterile conditions, and thanks to the drugs administered. Tonight we baptized Ari June Kinney, giving thanks to God, not only for her birth, but also for God's faithful promise to not only be with Ari and her parents and her sister Ava and her extended family, including cousins Alexis, Aaron, and Aiden, and her new church family. We were able to baptize Ari. We were able to celebrate and rejoice as a family of faith because of one truly miraculous birth that took place over 2,000 years ago. Without the birth of this special baby, life as we know it would not be possible. Life without Emmanuel, the with us God, would not be as blessed, would not be as abundant, would not be as joyful. Amazingly, the birth of this baby Jesus was both spectacular and ordinary. As Luke tells us, it wasn't a nice lullaby that played when Jesus was born. Rather, it was a huge, angelic chorus, complete with light show, that announced his birth. As Martin Luther noted, what exalted honor is that when all the angels in heaven cannot restrain themselves from breaking out and rejoicing so that even poor shepherds in the fields hear them and sing and pour out their joy without measure. Heaven sang when the Son of God was born. The angels couldn't contain their joy, singing and glorifying God while proclaiming the good news of peace, real peace, not the kind of Pax Roma that Caesar was promoting, but real peace in the form of the Prince of Peace had come. The angels sang and they praised God at the birth of his beloved son. Is it any stretch to think that heaven is alive with song all the time? Not just during the holiday season? There are over 400 references to singing and song 
and more than 50 commands to sing in the Bible. God's creation sings, the birds of the air, the whales of the sea, for instance, and his creatures, at least those who are uninhibited, sing making music and joyful noise. Is it a stretch to think that heavenly songs were not only sung at Jesus' birth, but at yours and mine as well? Surely we will be moving from the sermon into the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. While the sacraments are holy times in which God is spiritually present to us in very material things like water and bread and wine, Scripture reminds us that there is also rejoicing in heaven in times like these. And as a family of faith, we will be feasting in preparation for the heavenly banquet that awaits us when the second advent occurs and Jesus returns in all of his glory. That means on this holy night, in this sacred place, as we worship God and celebrate Jesus' birth, as we partake of his holy gifts through the sacraments, there is a whole lot of heavenly singing going on. There's a whole lot of rejoicing in heaven going on, even if we cannot physically see it or hear it. Now, I know that some of you may not feel too much like singing right now. Some of you may have questions of whether God remembers your name, never mind if you sang at your birth. Some of us may not care about any of this because God really doesn't have a place in our lives right now. What with the ongoing COVID challenges, work stress, financial worries, health concerns, loved ones gone, you name it. Many think that was the case for the shepherds. They were outcasts in society. God had no place in their lives. Some towns banned them from entering the city gates. The religious leaders labeled them as sinners, just like the tax collectors and the prostitutes, because of their profession. Chances are good the shepherds were not even thinking about anything divine that night so long ago. But God had not forgotten about them, just as he has not forgotten about any of us. You ever wonder why Jesus wasn't born in a palace in Jerusalem? Or at least in a safer, more sanitary place? Ever wonder why the angel didn't appear at the temple with the good news? Or at least at the local synagogue? Why did the angels appear to men who had such questionable character that they weren't even allowed to testify in court? Probably for the same reason that Jesus was born in the cave to very poor parents and put in a feeding trough instead of a comfortable crib. In spite of our hallmark images, that holy night there were no magi bearing cool gifts. There was no bright star hovering over the same the stable to mark this significant occasion. There was only an exhausted mom and dad and maybe a few sleepy livestock. The angelic lullaby that was sung was off in the distance outside of Bethlehem. God came to humanity in a way that humanity, whether rich or poor, outcast or insider, religious or not, could understand and relate to God. God became one of us in the most dire of situations so that he could come alongside you and me in our dire situations. He can relate to us because he has been there because he has gone through that, whatever there and that might be in your life. He is Emmanuel, the God who is with us. He is Jesus, the one who came to save us from our sins. And amazingly, God does this beginning in our baptisms. God comes to us with his Holy Spirit and puts his ownership stamp on us. And he welcomes us into his divine family. And the ownership stamp sings out, You are mine and I love you. That happened for Ari June tonight. And even though she's not fully aware of that awesome reality, it did happen. And that's what happened to each one of us who've been baptized, even if there are times that we're not fully aware of that awesome reality. And that's why tonight we celebrate with singing. Jesus' birth unleashed hope and love and peace and joy into the world until the day of his coming back. And so we can celebrate with singing because the peace of Christ 
surpasses all understanding. And God's love is stronger than any human sin. And we can celebrate with singing because from the moment that he took his first breath until the day of his glorious return, Jesus says to each one of us, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now that's something to sing about. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woohoo! Amen.
Glory to you, O Lord. 